Our home planet is the third from the sun and the only place that can sustain life and has water on its surface. Our planet has a comfortable temperature and a mix of organic materials that have made a life here possible. Most importantly, since Earth's temperature is warm, allows liquid to not evaporate after long periods of time, and that was the winning formula for life to begin here about 3.8 billion years ago. Some suggest that life was brought to our planet by comets and asteroids. Scientists believe that much of Earth's water was brought by comets and asteroids along with other organic materials. Our planet is unique. In our solar system, it's the only planet containing life. For the first billion years of Earth's history, the formation of life was non-existent due to impacts from asteroids and comets which rendered the surface of our planet too hot in order to host any life. Life on Earth began 3.8 billion years ago, when all impacts ended. Other planets in our solar system like Jupiter, Venus, could not support life as we know it. Life is a sort of miracle here. That said, humans are always looking to the skies beyond our solar system to find life light years away with the help of radio telescopes. Actually, we did find evidence of life in many exoplanets, and also this decade we will send the first astronauts to Mars with the hope to build a city and settle there. 2020 will be the decade of space exploration in our solar system and beyond. But how about here, our home? In this film, we will explore together life on our planet in many different settings. Join us for this journey and beyond. to Greenland. Greenland covers a surface 18 times the size of New York. 
and is the largest island on our planet. Most of its population is concentrated on the southwest coast. The majority of inhabitants are Inuit, and they first migrated from northern Canada. The climate of Greenland differs a lot. For example, on the north part of the island, the average temperature ranges from minus 30 Celsius in February to 3.5 Celsius in July. In the southern part, the average temperature ranges from minus 8 in February to plus 7 in July. Biodiversity is very rich on the island. There are 700 species of insects and the ocean is rich in fish. A visitor can spot whales and large colonies of seabirds, as well as polar bears, arctic foxes and arctic wolves. The landscape in Greenland is majestic. The island is covered by an exotic, minimalistic sheet of ice and icebergs. Visitors can hear the sound of the moving icebergs and the water. They also can observe the effects of climate change. Many icebergs are melting and Greenland has contributed to the rise of sea levels. Scientists have observed fin polar bears dying of hunger due to the melting of the ice as they were trying to reach their food supply. Urbanization. According to the UN, the world's urban population in 1950 was 750 million people. Presently, there are 7.2 billion people and 3.9 billion of them live in urban areas. By the year 2050, the population in urban areas is expected to grow to 6.4 billion. Many urban areas are metropolitan areas, or greater, as in the Greater Toronto Area. Planning for these megacities is very important.
city must have a good transportation system, for example, for people to be able to move easily and fast from their homes to work, school or to entertainment venues. Another plan consists of new materials for building housing, to make them sustainable and affordable. In China, for example, the government started building condos in a pyramid shape. Many megacities around the world lack green spaces. This makes life more stressful for citizens. The problem though is starting to change. Governments started investing in creating green spaces, planting more trees, and cutting emissions by half by 2030. Electrifying the economy with electric vehicles and new manufacturing technology is the future for our planet. Many people on our planet live a simpler life close to nature away from urban cities. Life away from big cities is more relaxing and less stressful. According to the UN, people outside big cities live longer and enjoy a healthier diet and quality time with others. Life is simpler, and in countries like Morocco, the locals use donkeys as a means of transport or to sell food. In other parts of the world, 
indigenous people engage in cultural activities like dancing and music showcasing their history. On the contrary, in big cities, people are stressed and they socialize less. Another big factor that people are stressed about is the high noise levels of a city. Also, extreme working hours and traffic contribute to a less healthy mental state. Lots of civilizations have built monuments on our planet. The Greeks built the Acropolis, the Egyptians the pyramids, and most recently in 1450, 
the Incas built an estate for their emperor. Machu Picchu is located in southern Peru on a 2,400 meter mountain ridge. Visitors can find the Temple of the Sun and the Room of Free Windows. In 2007, the site was named one of the new Seven Wonders of the World. Was Machu Picchu the modern city of the past? Perhaps. 750 people were living year-round in the city doing different tasks for the emperor. Modern cities in Latin America are full of culture. People are participating in cultural events and enjoy themselves through the arts. Dancing, for example, is a common social activity in Peru. The indigenous people of Peru, the Yuru, live in Lake Titicaca on 120 artificial islands. Only a few hundred of them live on the islands. Most have moved to the mainland. Most residents eat fish, but also they hunt for birds, flamingos, ducks and seagulls. Life is simple for the Yuru, and they make their living by selling artifacts to tourists.
population. Presently on Earth, we have 7.3 billion people. According to the United Nations, we could reach 9.7 billion people by 2050, and over 11 billion by 2100. Is this sustainable? Will it be enough food for every person on Earth? It took 120 years for the population to double from 1 to 2 billion. Back in the 1800s, there were 1 billion people on the planet, and by 1920, we reached the 2 billion mark. Population growth happened so fast that we are unable to predict the consequences. This has never happened before, and we simply can't predict if such a large population is sustainable. What we can do is plan for the future. Ecological implications. Humans are consuming a lot and pollute a lot. Wealthy countries consume and pollute the most. So how many hectares of land each person uses to grow food, textiles for clothes and waste? According to the World Watch Institute, each person uses about 1.9 hectares of land. The average North American uses about 9.7 hectares. Water. Each 
human uses one gallon of water on a daily basis. In the USA in 2015, each citizen was using more than a gallon a day. Half of this was used to generate electricity, and the rest was for household use plus irrigation. At the same time, two billion people have no access to safe water. Water and food are essential for humans to survive. Is it possible to double our production in order to feed everyone on the planet? What will happen if present-day birth rates continue? One is for sure, humans can't continue to grow indefinitely. Our carrying capacity is very difficult to measure. Carrying capacity is the maximum number of species an environment can support indefinitely. Our planet does not have the biocapacity to sustain our current levels of growth and resource consumption. We will need three Earths by 2050 to sustain us all. So what can we do besides taking ecological measures on our planet?
Besides reducing our ecological footprint space is the future for the human race. At first, 
first we will need to explore our solar system, settle on planets and build cities. The first planet that we should settle is Mars, and many missions to Mars are happening during this decade. The Moon also can serve as a continuation of our lives on Earth. NASA already has the Artemis mission planned for 2024, and will start building the Gateway Space Station which will be orbiting the Moon permanently. We are going to the Moon to learn to build sustainable habitats in order for the astronauts to be able to explore more and run experiments. Gathering all this knowledge will let us gain the experience we need to settle on other planets or moons in our solar system. Artemis is the first step in the next era of deep space human exploration. For many thousands of years, humans lived on our beautiful blue planet without worries and felt protected. Earth was very hospitable to all of us, but now the time has come to take care of our planet, standing all together as one. We need to take care of the environment and achieve the next big thing in which we make our human race multi-planetary.